President Clinton wanted to appoint you to the Supreme Court of the United States. You had been a federal judge, you had been a federal prosecutor, you had been a, uh, a trial lawyer, and um, tell us about that. Did he actually call you up and talk to you about this? Yes, he did. Uh, talked to me on the phone and in person about it, and he did tell me that he wanted to appoint me to the Supreme Court. What had happened is that uh, my term was up in the Senate uh, in, uh, at the end of 1994. And in March of that year, I announced that I was not going to seek re-election. Uh, the night before I announced it, I went down to the White House and I had dinner with President Clinton. We had a long talk, a couple of hours. He tried to talk me out of leaving, but I had made up my mind. Uh, and uh, he said, well, if something comes up in the future that I, I think you can be helpful in, in government, would you be willing to consider it, or, or you just want to leave government? And I said, oh, no, I, I, I love government service. I love public service, uh, and uh, that's not why I'm leaving. I said, if, uh, uh, if something comes up you think I can be helpful on, I'd be very glad to consider it. Well, by complete coincidence, about a month later, a vacancy occurred on the Supreme Court, and he called me. And he said, uh, I'd like to appoint you to the Supreme Court. And uh, we talked about it. Uh, I declined his offer uh, for the following reason. Uh, a few months earlier, in November of uh, 1993, I introduced in the Senate, as the Senate Majority Leader, the, the health care reform bill that the Clinton administration had produced. Uh, a month after that, in December of 1993, uh, Senator Chafee of Rhode Island, he is a Republican and uh, he is a wonderful man, a great senator and a very good friend of mine, has a summer, his family has a summer home in Maine, uh, introduced sort of the Republican version of the bill. Chafee and I... Now, was, Ch was he Chafee on, by himself on that bill or were there other... No, ones? there were, I think, about two dozen senators. in Republicans? That. Yes, including Senator Dole, who was then the Republican leader. It was a substantial bill. In so this fact. was the Republican health care bill? Yes, yeah. in December of uh, 1993. And Chafee and I and several other senators talked over a period of time in the ensuing months. Uh, and when the Supreme Court vacancy occurred, uh, both... It was in the spring. Uh, both Chafee and I felt that we had a chance to bring the two bills together and to pass major health care reform. Bipartisan. Bipartisan, which would have been a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, and I told President Clinton that uh, the fact is that while I'm, I'm flattered and honored and I, I, I would have been really enjoyed being a justice on the Supreme Court, as you know, it's a, an aspiration or a dream for most lawyers. I felt that there were plenty of people who could serve on the Supreme Court, but I, as Senate Majority Leader, was deeply involved in the health care reform effort uh, with Senator Chafee and many others, and I thought we had a reasonable chance to pass it, and that if, if, if I left, uh, uh, that effort might fail. Ultimately, it failed anyway. Uh, we, uh, we were mistaken in our belief that we could bring the two bills together. We never could, and by uh, the time we got to Labor Day, uh, the effort was over and unsuccessful. So uh, uh, I, I made a decision based on my best estimate uh, of the circumstances at that time. It didn't work out, but uh, uh, Clinton found a very good man, uh, Stephen Breyer, who is now uh, still on the court and is an outstanding uh, justice. So while I obviously have pangs of regret at not becoming a Supreme Court Justice, uh, I felt I, I, I tried to do the right thing and it didn't work out. Well, one observation, uh, Senator, uh, think of all the things you wouldn't have done if you'd gone on the Supreme Court. I mean, you've had an interesting career in the private sector as a lawyer, as the chairman of the world's largest law firm, as the chairman of the board of uh, Disney, you work in Northern Ireland, you work in the Middle East, you work in baseball, on and on and on, wouldn't have happened if you'd said yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, you make those, th th those are difficult choices because you're right, I'm a lawyer for most lawyers in America, that's a dream, mm -hmm. to be on the Supreme Court of uh, the United States. And we all know how they fight to get on the Supreme Court and what they have to do 
to go through the process is pretty rough. Uh, my guess is that there are very few people, at least in recent American history, at least in the last century, who have said to a president who called them, I'd like to nominate you to the Supreme Court, who have said, no, I don't think so. I, uh, there's no, we can only speculate uh, yeah. or read a lot of presidential biographies uh, to get to the bottom of that, but uh, you may be the only one in, in a r recent history or all of history for all, all we know, but that doesn't make any difference. Well, I talked to Clinton about it at some length. We, we had a couple of meetings, and uh, he understood and was in agreement. He wanted to get health care done, he, he, and he thought we had a chance. Uh, we all have, felt it. Did you time. have the, with the Democrats, this is 93, right. uh, the Democrats, I assume, uh, were promoting what uh, the Republicans today say is so awful, uh, what they call it Obamacare, which is a mandate that people get insurance. And the Republicans, well, I assume, were opposed to that. Uh, uh, no, that's not correct. It's, it's a, an interesting echo of history. Uh, over time, uh, uh, throughout American history, uh, both major parties have seen their positions change, often in reverse on many issues, uh, usually over a fairly long period of time. In this case, the bill that uh, President Clinton proposed provided for an employer mandate that all employers other than small businesses which were exempted would be required to provide health insurance to their employees. Uh, the Republicans were very strongly opposed to that. So they proposed an individual mandate that is that each American be required to purchase health insurance. Wait a minute. So the Republicans proposal was that the government essentially order each American to get health insurance. Well, you're, you're, you're uh, making I'm, the point that... I'm being uh, trying to be provocative. Right, <laughs> yes. Uh, but so you're right. The individual mandate was initially proposed, was an, a Republican proposal made in, at the end of 1993 and the subject of debate in the 1994 uh, controversy over health care reform. Since then, uh, the Republican position has uh, uh, changed completely, and now, as you can tell from the uh, uh, campaign, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an article of faith among Republicans that the individual mandate is unconstitutional, and in fact, there's a case now going to the Supreme Court, many cases, which will be consolidated in the Supreme Court uh, on that precise subject, and in every one of the debates of the Republican presidential candidates, they outdo each other in saying that they're going to repeal Obamacare because of the individual mandate, which ironically uh, was initially a Republican idea. And, and just to stretch, uh, stretch the discussion a little bit further, the same thing is true of the so-called cap and trade on pollution emissions. Uh, in 1990,